In this video, I'm going to go over what a lazy filmmaker does versus a pro filmmaker when it comes to color grading. In case this is your first time here, I'm Fred Trevino. I've been a professional colorist for 15 years and I've graded 60 feature length films and hundreds of short form projects for companies like Pepsi, ESPN, Under Armour, just to name a few. In my videos, I like to mainly focus on the creative side of color grading. There's a ton of great channels out there focusing on mainly the technical, but here I like to focus on what you can do to your projects on the creative side to make them look as best as they can. So with that being said, let's jump right in. This intro intentionally left blank. Okay, so number one, lazy filmmaker would go out, they shoot their film, they start editing, and they would leave it in log through all of post-production. And then at the very end, they're so used to seeing it in log that they would view it, think it looks great, not wanna change a thing, and then they export it and send it out into the world like that. A more experienced professional filmmaker will always take the footage, have a LUT on set in the camera or in the monitor so that they know what they're going to be getting in post-production. They have a very good idea of what their film is going to look like. And as soon as they get into the edit, they tend to apply that same LUT that they had on set in the editing room so that they know what they're working with, they know what their film looks like, and then they take that all the way through to the end and they also realize that that LUT is only temporary until they start doing the real grade if they're doing it themselves or it's something to give to a colorist just as a reference and then the colorist takes it from there and then they can take that film, take it to a whole different level and with that workflow you end up with a much more polished, professional, cinematic looking film. So number two, a lazy filmmaker will go out, shoot, only apply a LUT to all their footage. And just like in the log situation, they work with that LUT for so long that they get used to it. They don't wanna change a thing, or maybe they might go in, tweak a few things, they get used to it. They don't realize that it's too dark, that it's overexposed. They don't realize all the issues it has, that shots maybe don't even match. And they wrap it up and then they export that out into the world, send it to film festivals, show it to friends and families and have screenings with it. In comparison, a professional filmmaker or one with more experience knows that for the most part, LUTs are temporary. They take that LUT, they use it for only in camera, they don't bake it in, or they put it on the monitor on set. And again, as I mentioned before, they only use it as a temporary look in the edit until they get to the actual color grading. Very rarely is that LUT left there, tweaked and not removed. Okay, so number three is probably one of the most important ones in this video. And that is lazy filmmaker comes into a grade with an overly technical mindset. And this is how this works. Usually they grade and they're so obsessed with the technical side of filmmaking that they obsess and focus only on matching all the shots, on having perfect, quote unquote, perfect skin tones. They obsess on you know, seeing everything in the shot, even if it's a nighttime scene, even if it's something in the background, they focus more on things in the background than the story and, and the actors. And what I find that usually happens with this mindset is that you end up with a very flat, drab, boring looking movie that looks more like a soap opera than anything else. This kind of mindset is a type that's scared of shadows, scared of having a dark scene, they want everything to be bright. They want to see everything and they're afraid of doing things the wrong way on a technical level. And that bulldozes the creativity in them and then their project really suffers. Now a professional filmmaker, DP, colorist, it's all a group effort. And the way this normally happens with them is they always know that they can throw certain things out the window. So they go out, they start shooting, they don't care as much about having the perfect skin tones. They don't worry about matching. All that stuff is just kind of a given. They know that will happen. And they focus more on what is the look for this scene? What is the look for the next scene? How can we make the story really shine? How can we make this dark, sad, somber scene look a certain way? How can we make this happier scene look a certain way? You know, everything was planned. Everything was orchestrated and go out and watch movies. A lot of times 
shots within scenes will not match and that might be intentional. If you're cutting to a character who's in a happier mood, they won't match the character that's in a sadder mood. And that was intentional. That's just a small example of a lot of things that you could say go outside the norm, whereas the lazy filmmaker would just simply almost not even watch their scene. They would just focus on matching, 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 and they would jump from a scene in the first five minutes, and then they would jump to the scene 30 minutes later and they would make sure that those two scenes match and not focus on the story, not mo focus on the mood or the tone or what the characters are feeling. And they don't focus on things like the music matching the color grade because they're so bogged down with only the technical that they go blind to making their movies look good even if they're bending the rules, even if they're doing things that aren't supposed to be done a certain way because in the end, a lot of times, the things that we love and the looks where people ask, oh, how did you get that look? It's always usually a look where they, where rules were broken a little bit, rules were bent a little bit, and things don't look perfect, skin tones aren't perfect, and that's just to help tell the story. And number four is sort of related to the previous one, but it's really about kind of falling into the mindset of just following trends you don't plan out your look, you don't plan things out on set, you, you start your edit, you finish, you picture lock, and then you start thinking about color grading. And then you will take a teal and orange look and you just try to slap it onto your film. You'll take a Kodak 2383 LUT, slap it onto your film. And that's the extent to which you apply a look to your film. You just kind of try to force a look onto your project, whether it works or not. And even worse, I see this all the time, people apply an adjustment layer to their whole film, let alone not even a scene, but to the whole film, drop a lot to the whole film, go in, do a few tweaks, and then, that's, and then they call that done. That makes for a very sloppy, very lazy way of grading. And what happens there is that's when movies or projects usually end up looking more like student films where they almost look like these small budget movies trying to be and trying to look like bit big budget movies. And then on the opposite end, a professional production, a professional filmmaker, they plan everything from the absolute beginning. They know what every single scene is gonna look like. They have storyboards, they have lookbooks, they know what every actor, they know what color they're gonna wear. They know what the background's gonna look like. They know how everything is going to look. They have a temporary LUT. They do test shoots. You don't need extra money for test shoots. That's a huge misconception. You can very easily go out there, do a few tests, and then by the time you get to the end, the look should be 70 to 80% baked into your footage. And then the colorist is just basically polishing it up, putting it all together tweaking the mistakes that were maybe done on set, and you find that that look is custom built for that film, which again leads to a much better, much more powerful grade than just forcing a LUT or a look or a plug-in onto your footage. Okay, so last one. This is kind of a small, big thing, so to speak. That is grading in the wrong environment. So Lazy Filmmaker might finish their cut, decide it's time to go grade, and then they'll take their laptop, go to a coffee shop or go into a bright office space and start grading their movie, not realizing that their laptop has night shift on, has true tone on, the brightness is constantly changing because there's bright windows that are open and the light is constantly changing in your environment. You know, and there's a difference between, of course, some people just don't know this, that's a whole other thing. And you know, and this is the thing where I've told my students before and they still go out and they grade in their living room, they grade in their coffee shop, they're, they grade wherever is convenient for them rather than you know, looking up a proper grading environment with certain lighting, 65K lighting, you know, gray walls, or even just neutral backgrounds, because I know not everyone can afford a grading suite, obviously, but you don't need money, you don't need a grading suite. It's simply going somewhere with consistent lighting, making small tweaks, and that will make a huge difference in your grade compared to just going out into a bright environment that's with constant changes and trying to make your grade work that way. 
So of course, a professional production or filmmaker will know this. So even if it's a, someone who's grading it themselves on their MacBook, they'll go into a dark space, they'll close the windows, they'll make sure there's no distractions behind their monitor. You can buy a bias light now, they can be pretty cheap. You put 65K lighting behind your light and you try to make your environment as consistent and as close to a grading suite as possible. And that is one of those things that makes a bigger difference than you would think. I would say that most colorists would much rather have a mediocre monitor in the proper grading environment than a $50,000 monitor grading in a bright, uncontrolled environment. Okay, so there you have it. That's the video. A lot of information in this video. Hope you learned something. Any questions, ask below. Like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later.